Hi, you guys. My name is Claudia Green. I'm a third year medical student in Miami, Florida. I'm so glad you're here. Today, I'm going to tell you guys how I studied during my first and second year of med school. During my first year, I didn't touch Anki at all, and I used a lot of our school's recommended resources. And then during my second year, I used Anki a lot, and I used a lot of the high yield board review resources. I was able to hit all of my academic goals, and I was able to beat my goal board score. So I feel that these methods I used really work. During my first semester, of first year, I really just tried to stay afloat. That was the advice that all the upperclassmen gave us. Do what you need to do to feel okay and secure because the first semester is pretty scary. You have no idea how you're going to do. Go easy on yourself. It's okay if you're not hitting high yield board review resources. I know I wasn't. I was just trying to study for each exam and get through each exam one by one. You'll have time to start worrying about boards after that first semester. So how did I actually study first semester and second semester of my first year? I used a pass tracker, which is an Excel spreadsheet. I listed out every textbook chapter that was gonna be on our exam. And then I would keep track of every pass that I did through that material. So using the pass tracker, I kind of made my own form of spaced repetition. And I made sure that I saw the same content over and over again before an exam. I would try to get through each chapter at least three to four times before an exam. So the different things that I would consider a pass when I was studying would be reading the textbook, reading a review book, doing a Quizlet, or any kind of sort of flashcards, watching videos, studying with a friend. My friends and I used to love to quiz each other. That was a really great way to study. And then lastly, sometimes I would look through first aid, basically right before an exam, just to make sure I was getting in all the main points. So if we were doing a neuro block, I'd go into neuro and first aid and just real quick look through their tables. What I found to be most effective with studying this way was that I was seeing the material in different formats. Mixing all of these different avenues of learning and different resources really helped me feel like I wasn't missing anything. So by the time I got to an exam, I feel like I was able to master each topic and kept track of literally everything on my past tracker. So another thing I realized when I was using a past tracker is that a lot of things didn't click the first time, especially for me because I wasn't a bio or chem major in undergrad. Sometimes I would get really nervous like, oh my gosh, this concept isn't clicking. I just spent you know two hours reading the textbook and I had no idea what I just read. But then when I would go back to it the second or the third time, I'd be like, oh, okay, I kind of remember that or I kind of remember this. I guess I'm just telling you that because if you're also feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm not getting things, you're gonna get them. Just trust the process and know that the repetition will really help solidify all those details. The reason that I used textbook chapters in my Excel spreadsheet or like my past tracker was because our school was PBL based. So we were tested by textbook chapters. But if you guys go to a school that's mainly lecture format you could just keep track of all the lectures that you have to go through and then all the different formats that you're studying that same material so just to like summarize all of this kind of my big takeaways from using this method for studying is be organized if you don't keep track of everything you're gonna have no idea how you're actually doing don't be afraid to try different resources I know in the beginning I would only maybe do the textbook and then Quizlet I realized that the more I added in different resources the richer my knowledge base became because I'm seeing the information from so many different angles for my Instagram fam you guys have been seeing my study schedule since I started med school but for all of you guys that haven't I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of what a normal day might be like from 8 to 10 I would read a textbook for one chapter then take a 10 minute break for the next two hours I would maybe do a Quizlet and go outside for a quick walk. Then it's going to be a little after 12. I'll take a break until 1230 and have lunch. 1230 to 230, I'll have class. From 230 to 3, I'll take a break, regroup. After class, I was always just like fatigued. And it's also midday. I know I would need like a half an hour break. From 3 to 4, I would do videos for another chapter. And then from 4 to 5, I would go on another walk and do Quizlet. 5 to 730 was pretty much like my long break in the day. I would work out for about an hour, then shower, eat dinner, hang out with nap 7 30 until I went to bed about 10 30 maybe 11 at the latest if it was an exam week I would be done learning new material so then I would try and study with a friend at night and if it was not an exam week then I would be continuing to learn more material so I might go back and read to the textbook or do a quizlet that's what a normal day was like for me how I studied during my second year of med school during second year I focused a lot more on the high yield board review resources I learned how to use Anki and decided that I was going to 
really use this resource to prep for boards. So I used the On King deck. It's free on Reddit. My method for studying during second year was I would find videos that related to the chapters we were being tested on, watch those videos, and then I would add in the Anki cards for the videos. So let's say I watched a sketchy video on SSRI because we were doing, you know, psych drugs. I would go into my Anki and add in those, you can literally pick the cards for each video that you watch, which is amazing. I would pick like the SSRI video and add just those cards to my Anki deck. So if you guys decide to use Anki, I definitely recommend trying to utilize it alongside what you're learning in school. That's how I used it. So whatever block we were doing, I was watching a high yield board review resources for that block and then adding the Anki cards that went along with the videos that I would just watch. And if you guys are curious how to use Anki, let me know in the comments. I can always make a tutorial video. I also have a lot of information on my Instagram on how to use Anki. So the breakdown of how I would spend my energy on new cards versus review cards was I would do about 100 new cards per day and then anywhere from 600 to 800 reviews. I would try to do my reviews first thing in the morning because they were always the most daunting to me and then adding the new cards. I could get through them a lot faster because after I'd watch a video, the information was so fresh in my mind. I'm going to give you guys a quick breakdown of what resources I used for what subjects in school. Start with Pathoma. I used Pathoma for Path. And then I used Sketchy for Micro and Farm. I used Boards and Beyond for Biostats and Physiology. I used Dr. Najib for Neuro. Dr. Najib is the one resource where the videos are a little bit longer, but I felt like for me, Neuro was one of the hardest subjects in school, so I needed that extra information. During second year, I was mainly using Anki and those high yield resources. I was just listening out. But I would also, the week before the exams, still quiz with my friends, still do practice questions. I would go through the textbook or review books just to make sure I was getting all the high yield info. And I used first aid a lot. First aid was something that I had open on my desk basically 24 seven. And while I would be watching videos, I would annotate and take notes in first aid. And then the week before the exam, let's say the exam was on neuro and I had watched all the videos and Pathoma and Boards and Beyond and Sketchy, all that. And I had all my notes written down in that section of first aid. And I would just real quick flip through it the week before and just make sure that I was fresh on all those notes. I really liked using first aid because it was so concise and was such a great resource to use right before exams to make sure you got in all the high yield details. So I shared with you guys what a day would be like if I was not using Anki. And now I'm gonna share what it would be like if I was using Anki. Wake up around eight and then I would basically do my Anki reviews until about 12 to lunchtime. And then I would take a break. I was usually already like, oh my gosh. I kind of fried <laughs> just finishing my Anki reviews. So I'd take a break from 12 to 12.30. Then I would have class 12.30 to 2.30. I would take a half an hour break after class from 2.30 to 3. And then basically, I always noticed that my energy was pretty low in the afternoon. So videos for me were passive learning and I could kind of sit back, take my notes. So 3 to 5, I would do videos. 5 to 6, I would add in those new Anki cards from the videos that I just watched. 6 to 8.30 would be my break. I could work out, make dinner, hang out with Matt. 8.30 to 10, I'd probably be finishing up my Anki cards or watching more videos. Something I didn't realize early on is, let's say you're having the neuro exam. You wanna finish all those videos and all the new cards about a week out from your exam at least because you wanna see each card a couple times before the exam. If you're adding new cards two days before the exam, well then you've only seen the card once and how are you gonna remember that when it comes up on the exam? By the time I was a week out from an exam, I was tried to be done adding new Anki cards and then that way in the afternoons and evenings, I could be doing practice questions or quizzing with a friend. My main focus during second year was my step and complex scores. But I know for a lot of you guys, these exams are going to be pass fail. So it's going to be a fine balance between focusing too much on boards and not focusing enough on your coursework and talking to your med school advisors about what they recommend. Reflecting on how I studied first and second year, I feel like both methods worked really well. But I do feel like during second year using Anki helps with my long-term retention. So definitely recommend using those high yield resources as early as you can. These methods really work for me. I'm always happy to help you guys troubleshoot. You can send me a DM on Instagram or drop a comment. I know how overwhelming the first two years can be, but before you know it, you're going to be in third year. I can't believe I'm in my fifth month of third year right now, and it's all going to be worth it. So keep studying hard and take care of yourselves. If you like this video, I would love if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel.